30th. this Sunday. 30th. 30th, yeah. He'll be back on 30th. And he will be conducting the New Year's service on 31st December. Yeah, these are all small updates and announcements that I'm making. Uh, and uh, so please uphold past the blessing in your, and family uh, in your prayers. And praise the Lord, Sharon is in our midst. <laughs> she has come down for her Christmas holiday. She just came for a few days this time. All right. Sharon, it's great to see you back in the team. Amen. And uh, one thing I need to say that when you are on the keys and Jebin and Bini on the guitar, there's nothing more we want to ask. Everything is so perfect in this piece. Thank and praise the Lord for that. Amen. It's going to be great, children of God. A fervent aroma. You can expect the same name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Give them a round of applause. You know, they also deserve to be praised. Because for all the hard work that they do. Amen. All glory to God. Amen. And Jonathan had a good few weeks of rest, I would say. Yeah? A good few weeks of rest in Dubai and he's ready to go back. So on 31st of December, he is leaving and along with him we are also planning to go for two weeks and we'll be back. Yeah, so in advance we are wishing you all a happy new year as a family. Yeah, we wish you all happy new year. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome everybody. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Church of the Redeemed Remnant. Amen. Amen. And this is our last Friday worship as we wrap up the year 2018. Amen. And uh, of course we will have this new year service but not in this hall. Yeah. Okay, so let's thank and praise the Lord. Let us thank and praise the Lord for His love, for His protection, for His provision, for His providence, and for preserving the church of the redeemed remnant throughout the last one year. Don't you want to give Him a clap offering? And those who are just walked in, give our Lord a big clap offering to the Lord. He's a mighty God. He's a good God. And what a beautiful verse to utter right now. Psalms 103, verse 1 and 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. I am sure everyone here, most of us know this verse by, by heart. So let's say, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Forget not all his benefits. Before I forget, Sister Sajidi is celebrating a birthday today. Happy birthday, Happy birthday Sister Sajidi. How can I forget that? Sorry. All right. So bless the Lord, O oh my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Forget not all his benefits. That's the people's problem is we forget the past. Whatever that he has done. So today... He's, we need to just bless him for all the benefits that he has showered upon us. Thank you, praise the Lord. And verse 5 says, who satisfies, can we make it personal here? Who satisfies my mouth with good things. good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. We can have some music. Amen. Hallelujah. So, our God is good all the time. All the time. And his mercies are new every day. Amen, amen. Are you ready to worship God? I hope you have come here with the right attitude. Amen. You know, the Bible talks about something. This I want to just share with you. And he puts this in my heart uh, last week. So I just, it is fresh in my heart. So let me share that with you all. You know, he sees our inside and reward us accordingly. Amen. And what does prophet Isaiah say about the true attitude that we should have when we when we are in his worship or when we, when we are in the presence of God. What is the true attitude that we should have? The attitude for the day of worship in particular. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, verse 13. He says, you are to call the day of worship a delight. The day of worship? Delight. A delight. And he says, you are to call the Lord's holy day honorable. Hallelujah. That is what Isaiah 58, 13. If you read it, it says, call the Sabbath. Sabbath is the day of worship. A delight and Lord's holy day, honorable. How do you do it? You honor it by not going your own way. Amen. And not 
doing as you please and speak idle words. These are to be, you know, watched very carefully. So he says three things. If you want to honor her by not going your own way and not doing as you please and speaking or speaking idle words. So read for verse 14 talks about how God will reward us. If you have that attitude, you call Lord's holy day a delight. And, and if you keep it honorable, it says, then you will find your joy in the Lord. That's the reward. And I will cause you to ride in triumph on the heights of the land. You want to be victorious children of God? Take note of this verse. And he said to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob. Oh, thank you Jesus. Thank you Father God. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. That's what the verse says. What happened to the verse? Isaiah 50, uh, 58 verse 14. So it says, then you will find your joy in the Lord and I will cause you to ride in triumph on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. So the day of worship brings pleasure, great pleasure in the Lord. Yeah, and unending joy. It will engulf you. If you truly come into that, in, with that attitude. What is the Apostle Paul says in the New Testament to the believers, to the, to, the, to the church, to the body of Christ? Let's look at that. Romans 12, 1. He says, have a lifestyle of daily worship. On those days in old times, they used to go maybe once. Yeah? To, the, to, to, to sacrifice. Or on a special day. Whatever that it may be, it doesn't matter. But today, Apostle Paul says, you should have a lifestyle of daily worship. How can we do that? Read Romans 12, 1. So don't restrict it to a day in particular. Let the whole lifestyle be a daily worship attitude. Yeah, amen? Amen? amen. Yes. Therefore, I urge you, Romans 12, 1. Brothers and sisters, he says, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. And this is your true and proper worship. Hallelujah. Let your whole lifestyle be, uh, be of daily worship. By presenting our bodies, four components are there. Our bodies, living, holy, acceptable to God every single day, all throughout your life. Amen. It is possible. It is possible. Let us stand in the presence of God. Presenting our bodies, living, holy, acceptable to God, which is our spiritual worship children of God. And we have the Spirit of God within us. And this is the treasure that we have. It's nothing that is impossible. If you really want to go in, and go in and derive that power from above. Nothing is impossible. Let every act of living body be an act of worship this evening. Amen. Can you just be in that attitude, children of God? Lord. Let every act of our living body be an act of worship. And let every act of our living body demonstrate that God is our treasure. Yes, that is what Corinthians talk, talk about. We have this treasure within us. Thank you, Jesus. Let every act of your living body show that Christ is more precious to you than anything else in this world. Amen. Can we search our hearts this evening? As we are in a few days, as we are entering into the new year, children of God, there are small changes here and there. We need to do small things, small changes in our life so that we know that we, are, we will step into this new year with Jesus, Amen. Jesus on our right side, holding us and His grace go before us and His glory will be the real God. I thank and praise the Lord. Can let every act 
of worship. We then, you know, we need to, if you want to go in with the living, at the attitude of living worship, we, we need to be, you know, we need to dishonor certain things which we like from our life. Thank you, praise the Lord. This evening, can we be in an attitude of prayer? Thank you, Jesus. Father God, you have called us worthy. And as the song says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Amen. Can we say that together? Because he lives, I can face, face tomorrow. tomorrow. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just sing that few lines, children of God? Because he lives. Because he lives, I can face Christ in us and therefore you have no authority 
you over us. And in spite of our problems, we will praise and worship our God. And you will sit and listen to this today. Amen, amen, amen. Today, let's praise and worship Him with all our strength, all our might, all our mind. Everything that is given to our God. Amen.
name of Jesus. Amen. Do you love to shout the name of our God? Hallelujah. And this song, just shout it out.
are greater. You are a great God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Father, we just want to praise you. for the ways you have led each of us. You are a loving Father. Your love endures forever. Father. We just want to thank your holy name, Father. Thank you, Jesus. As we have come to the end of this year and the last Friday of our worship, we just want to glorify your holy name, God. We are just grateful to you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace, Lord. We just want to thank you, Father, for the ways you have led us, Lord. All these years, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the protection, the love, the health, the finances, our jobs, our businesses. My God, you have carried us in your arms. Thank you, Jesus. We remember you, Jesus, this evening. For the ultimate sacrifice you did for each of us. This evening, we remember that you came into this world as man. You were torn apart. You were crucified on that cross for our eternal salvation. This evening, Father, let us each examine ourselves once again, Father. If there is any unrighteous, unholy ways in us, O oh Lord, Father, we ask forgiveness, my God and my Lord. Wash us and cleanse us with that precious blood of yours. Father, let us start the new year with you in our life. And the Holy Spirit leads us and speaks to us what is right and what is wrong. Because our end goal is your eternal kingdom. We want to be at the right hand of Jesus. When he comes for us, calls us at the time of rapture we pray that all of us should be taken away from this place oh Lord but this is a transit point for each of us and we remember our brothers and sisters and our friends and families this evening we pray for them we pray for them Lord from our hearts if they have not accepted you we cry out my God and my Lord Nothing is impossible for you, my Lord. Father, change those callous hearts. Father, open those blind eyes. Open those deaf ears, Father. Let them submit and surrender their lives to you, my God. This evening we pray for them, Father. Wherever they are, Lord, Father, as we pray, your mighty hand is going to touch them, Father. And they're going to accept you, Father, as their personal Lord and Savior. You are a great God. You are a living God. We worship a creator God. We don't worship an idol or a stone God. A God who sees our every need this evening, Father. Our children are going through problems, situations in their job places, in their finances, in their health. I pray and ask you, Lord, touch them. Amen. Open those doors, Father. Open those floodgates of heaven and pour out your truth. And let them testify in your great name, Father. Yes, how good a God you are. Because we have seen it. Yes. We have tasted it. Yes. We have testified. Amen. You are a living God. Amen. This evening we pray for this land, Lord. We pray for this land. We pray for you, AE, and the leaders, O Lord, Father. Yes, Lord. Give them the wisdom and knowledge through your Holy Spirit. To rule the hind fist. And this country we pray accepts Jesus as their personal Savior. Yes, Lord. We pray for Israel, your firstborn. Let them accept the Messiah, Jesus. Amen. And we pray for the countries around the world that there be peace, O oh Lord. Yes. The peace that you give, no man can give. Amen. These are the days, the last days, Father. We surrender everything at your feet, Lord. We pray for our children and the next generation. We intercede for them, Lord. Hear our cries. This evening, 
Father, give them the wisdom and knowledge. The fear of the Lord gives them the wisdom and knowledge. Let them seek your kingdom and your righteousness, Father. And everything will follow through. Hallelujah. God, we cry out. Now them should be lost. Let them be on your track, O oh Lord, Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful praise and worship, O oh Lord. We pray for the praise and worship team. Bless them, Father. Yes, Cover them and seal them under your precious blood. Amen. We pray for this church, O oh Lord. This is your church, my God. Yes, we remember our pastor and his family. Bless them. Cover them. Seal them under your precious blood. Yes, Lord. And let us all do your work, Father. We are assigned as disciples for you in this land. Amen. Use us, mighty God. Let us be rooted in your word. And you want us to save souls for your kingdom, Father. Amen. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We know your presence is right in our midst. Take complete control of this session, Lord. And we pray for the brother who's going to come and give the word, Father. Yes, Let the Holy Spirit speak through him. Hallelujah. Let the touch the hearts of your children Lord. Yes, Lord. and cover and seal him and his family under your precious yes, Lord. thank you Father for hearing our prayers we know that you have heard our prayers and we're going to hear mighty testimonies in the coming weeks and we start the year with you once again Father keep us safe and sound under your precious blood seal us no work of the evil one can touch us because we are your children and we have accepted you as our personal Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hello. It's one of the songs we just sang. It is, it is wonder, awestruck wonder at the name of our Lord. Hello? Hello, hello, yeah. So it is, it is wonder, awestruck wonder at the name of the Lord. One of the name that Bible tells about Jesus Christ is Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel is God with us. We have a portion in the scriptures that is Isaiah chapter uh, 7 to 12 which itself is known as the book of Emmanuel so let us let us let us uh, meditate on these few words uh want to just take uh, Isaiah chapter 7 The period that we are talking is about, it's around uh, 734 BC. It is uh, 740 BC that Isaiah got his prophetical calling. It is the year that King Uzziah died. The scripture says, when King Uzziah died, Isaiah was called for his prophetic calling. And Ahaz, who was ruling in Judah, his tenure was from 736. And this period we are talking in 734 BC, it is backwards. So, 736, after two years, this is a situation where Ahaz is facing. Ahaz was only 20 years when he took the crown, took the throne. So I think so he is 22 years at this time. This is a period that is 734 BC. It is six years after Isaiah getting his prophetical call. It is two years after Ahaz. God is throne. You know you got what the what the, what the time is, time frame is. Now, in this time period, uh, there was one kingdom which was rising in power. That was the Assyrian kingdom. They were they were they were they were dominating the world over, and they were capturing all the small kingdoms. So the small kingdoms were all worried and were, they were petr petrified. One is one is Rezin, the king of Syria. And uh, as you know, after the time of Solomon, the kingdom was divided into two. Israel in the northern kingdom and Judah in the southern kingdom. It's Israel was also known as Ephraim. The capital was Samaria. And uh, Judah, the capital was Jerusalem. So this time period is a time period when Israel, not as a whole nation, but 
as two, two kingdoms. One is the northern kingdom, the second is the southern kingdom. Now, historically when we say, look at the situation, the king of Syria and the king of Israel, they wanted the king of Judah to come together to form an alliance to fight against Assyria. You're getting the picture, you're getting the historical background. So these three, these two kings, the king of Syria, Assyria is not Syria. Assyria is not Syria. Assyria is a, it's a, it's a northern part with Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia, Armenia, a lot of other, a lot of kingdoms which are now, the countries which are now. So Syria, the king of Syria and the king of Israel, they are coming together in alliance and they cannot stand alone against the might of the Assyrians. So they also want Ahaz of Judah to come and assist with them. But Ahaz refuses. Ahaz refuses. And here, the situation is now, they have a kingdom where the king is not coming to their terms. So what they do? They want to dethrone that king. So here, the king of Assyria and Pekah the son of Ramalia, who is the king of Israel or Ephraim, went up to Jerusalem to make war against it. But it could not prevail. Next, next verse. And it was to the house of David. It's not telling that it's to, to the king Ahaz. Because king Ahaz, it is, it, is, it, is, it is a line of kings coming to the house of David. Judah and Israel, were, it, was, it was, the kings were working two different ways. In Judah, the king can only be appointed to Davidic line. There can be no other successor apart from Davidic line. But in, in the northern tribe, it was by the direct selection by God. But they didn't, uh, you know, listen to God. And so we find the northern kingdom going into idolatry and many of the sinful things that they went. So they go into captivity first. But Judah, since it was the line of David, there were many good kings. Like Uziah was a good king. Uh, Uziah was a good king then. Uh, after Ahaz, Ezekiel comes. He's a good king. Then down the line you get Joshua, who was again a good king. So there were few kings in Judah which were good kings who were listening to what God wanted and were worshipping the way God wanted them to worship. So here, so it was told also David saying, Syria's forces are deployed in Ephraim. So Syria has come to the northern kingdom and they are trying to attack Judah. So his heart and the heart, whose heart? The king's heart, Ahaz. Ahaz is his king. His heart and the heart of his people were moved as the trees of the woods are moved with the wind. So what happened? He got scared. He got scared. Moved as a witness. He was trembling. He was trembling. It's similar to what happens to us. You know, many, 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 many situations. We find the enemy surrounded, and the enemy just wants to destroy us. It just doesn't give. They don't give us a passage to go by. But they want to completely annihilate us. Completely destroy us. That is the situation. Ours. It's not a normal war. It's not a friendly war. It is a war where the throne will be removed. Ahas, when, when any kingdom is captured, they kill the king, they kill the queen, the children, everyone. And, one, and the noble, all the noble people, they kill it is slaughter. So he was, he was very, very, very uh, afraid and he was very terrified as the trees were moving in the wind. But right, next. So now you know the situation. You have got a picture. What, what we are trying to, what the word what the is going to say. So there are two kings who are going, going to dethrone a third king. And here, now the Lord is telling to us, uh, Isaiah, Isaiah, go out to meet to us. Uh, someone can read this. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, go out now to meet Ahaz. You and share Jasub, your son, at the end of Adik. And then from, accurate. Accurate from the upper pool on the highway to the fuller's field. When any problem comes, we look at the human mind. We perceive with the human perception. We make decisions according to the human perception. Here, where God is telling Ahas, uh, Isaiah to go, where is Isaiah? He's at the accurate from the upper pool. He is inspecting. He is expecting a siege. He's expecting a siege from the northern people and he's seeing whether the water supplies will be correct. 
Understood? He's checking whether you're not getting that. So there's a siege. He has to go to whom? He has to go to the Lord. But he's preparing for the siege. So don't prepare anything for the enemy's attack. We have to trust in the Lord. Lord. We see if something will happen. We prepare for that, that situation. But why that situation has to come? You're getting my point. Why the situation has to come? Because God is all powerful to remove any situation. Amen. God controls the hearts of the kings. Even if they don't know God, who God is, but God is in the control of the whole universe. Amen. There's a kingdom that is going to come where only the Messiah will rule. But still, the kingdom of God is existing. The, the kings don't know it. You know, quite centuries back, uh, the prophecy was that there will come a king known as Cyrus. You know, after some 200 years, Cyrus is coming into the picture. And he is allowing the Israelites to go and build the temple. So God, even though we will have Arab kings or Hindu kings or any, any, any kings, but God has ultimate control. Without God allowing, no one can do anything. So any situation comes in our life, instead of packing, sorry, instead of packing and preparing to go, just kneel down and pray to God to remove that situation. Amen. God has the power to remove any situation. Amen. Let it be any situation. In darkness, he can create light. He even sees in darkness. That is what Psalm is saying. Even in the darkness, he can see. Who can see in darkness? God has created darkness and light. The darkness he can see. Okay. So here, Isaiah is preparing. He's, he is expecting a siege and is preparing that the, the water supplies are there. See here, Lord is worried about it. And the Lord sends his prophet. And he says, Go out to meet Ahaz, you and your son. The son's name is Sher Jashu. At the end of the aqueduct from the upper pool on the highway of the fullest field. One just go. And say to him, Take heed and be quiet. Do not fear. Be careful. Take heed, be careful. And be quiet. When any problem comes, we just start cursing and why this has come to me? Why why this ever had to come to me? Why not someone else? I am in the Lord. I know I worship the true God. They don't know you're the God and they're living happily. Why it has to come to me? Why in this situation? Because right before this, Israelites. If you read uh, some scriptures in Chronicles, Israel's attacked Judah and 120,000 people are killed. So Ahaz is thinking, why did that happen if God was a true Lord? You, you know Ahaz, the king Ahaz was not a, was a very, very sinful person because he even sacrificed his children in the fire. He was an idolater or every high years he made idols. And when he went to the Assyrian king, he saw the altar, he was so thrilled by seeing the beauty of the altar, he came and in the temple of God, he made that altar. So he was such a king. He was not to the will of God. So take it. God is telling you, you be careful and be quiet. When we come with any problem, any trouble, when we send it before God, we have to be quiet. We should not say, why did this happen to me? Because when we are trying to say that, what we are trying to do, we are putting the blame on God. Some, some situations come in our life. Some, some, uh, some trials come into, into our life. This trials and this temptations and this everything is for our, our, uh, our sanctification and our, uh, our going, coming more closer to God. Any trials in life, whether we, maybe we are out of job, we are, we are, we are, we are alone, remember, people have left us alone and uh, any problem in the family, finances, anywhere, we are feeling alone. That is the time, you know, actually we get closer to God. We don't look at people, we don't look at men. We come, we kneel down to God and we ask God without murmuring, with a, with a, with a, with a faithful heart. God can do mighty things. God can do mighty things. He says, take heed and be quiet. Do not, do not fear. fear. Our, today our one or two songs fear. Do not fear. Fear is not. Be, take courage. Take courage. Believe. Believe in me. Don't be faint at it. What is faint at it? Any problem comes. We are very terrified. Now everything is going to collapse. The whole building, whole structure is going to collapse. Our structure, our we are we are not staying in, in a building which is which has good good columns. We are standing here. We are standing here because we are believing in a God who is making this building to stand. Amen. Any place, any 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 vehicle you are driving, the roads, it is not in our control. Our children, our kids, no one is in our control. But God controls everything. If we surrender to God, mighty things, the peace of God will rest on us. So we not be free, children. 
Okay, how God is looking at things? See how Ahaz is looking. Two kings are going to going to destroy his destroy his kingdom. See how God is saying. Two stuffs of smoking firebrands. What are firebrands? What the, it's only smoking. It's not even burning. Like it is just in the in the end tail. It is just going to be gone. When we see the problem, we are seeing it as a big problem. But when God is saying, God knows this is going to pass away. This trial from your life is going to go away. This time where you are alone is going to pass. So we have to put our trust in whom? In God, not in ourselves. The way we look at problems is not the way God looks at things. When God is looking, is looking. It is smoked. Smoke means the fire has gone. The power in this kingdom is gone. Okay. Two stumps are smoking firebrands for the fierce anger of Rezin and Syria and the son of Remaliah, because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Remaliah have plotted evil against you, saying, "Let us go against Judah and trouble it, and let us make a gap in its wall for ourselves and set a king over them, the son of Tabal." Just hold it, huh? And set and set a king over them. So what is the plan? They want to dethrone Ahaz and keep a king, a person who will be. Willing to all their plans, like a proxy king, they want to keep a king, and the name of the king is son of Tabel. I say a place with the words in in, in the in the Jewish in the Hebrew context. Tabel, Tabel means God is good because it is a L. L. L is God. Tabel is L. But in many other translations, you have Tabel, T A B E A. In Hebrew, the language goes very well. It just changes the vowel. He wanted to mention Tabel, which is God is good, but he mentions Tabe, T A B E A, good for nothing. So that what that word means? By slight change of the vowel, the name meaning of the name is changed. In my scripture, is T A B in the K J V. This K J V in K J V. T A B E A. So that is how that is how God sees it. That is how Isaiah is seeing it. This guy see this T A B. E A. I don't know how English is uh, perfect with that uh, that pronouncement, but in Hebrew, in the actual scripture, it is a change of the vowel. Okay. So here, how Isaiah say, when they are thinking this, he is God is good. How how Isaiah and God is saying he is good for nothing. He cannot take the throne of Judah. Amen. Next. Thus says the Lord God, it shall not stand, nor shall it come to pass, for the head of Syria is Damascus. But just go. See, human beings and kings can plan a lot of things. Kingdoms can plan mighty things, but God says, "It shall not stand. Nor shall it come to pass." Who has ultimate authority? It is God who has ultimate authority. Not kings, not princes. They may make mighty plans. They may may make in number of schemes, but ultimate, it is God. If it is not in His will, He will say, "Will not stand." See, what what God looks at is our our children. If it is not good for His children, He will not allow it to stand. Neither it will come to pass. It will not stand now. Not now. It's only God is talking. In the future also, I will not allow this to pass. It's not the present tense. Also, in the future tense, I will not allow this to happen. For the head of Syria is Damascus. And the head of Damascus is Rezin. Syria's capital is Damascus, and the Damascus head is Rezin. Okay. Within sixty-five years, Ephraim will be broken, so that it will not be a people. The head. Sixty-five years is a period uh, that is the time of Manasseh. The whole kingdom is taken into captivity. So God is saying, it is in sixty-five years Ephraim will not be there, like a people is. Yeah. The head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Ramalia's son. If you will not, so Ephraim, Ephraim is Israel, uh, the northern kingdom. The northern kingdom's capital is Samaria, yeah. and the head of Samaria is Ramalia's son. If you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. So what God is, God wants to say here is to Ahaz, you believe this, you believe what I'm saying. Their plans are not going to succeed. It's coming through Isaiah. Whatever the schemes, whatever they make, it is not going to come to pass. But you have to do one thing. You have to believe. You have to believe. And if you believe, what will happen? You shall establish. If you believe, 
you shall if i believe i will be established if one you believe you will be as sir if you believe it is personal if you believe in god it's not you will grow or you will have prosperous you will be established established means no person can approve you amen no person can shake you amen no kings or princes can remove from where god has placed you amen so you shall be established Moreover, the Lord spoke again. That is the first conversation happening to us, and continually God is speaking to us again. Moreover, the Lord spoke again to us, saying, "Ask a sign for yourself from the Lord your God. Ask it either in the depth or in the yeah, height just above." One more time. God is telling now. See, this is not going to happen. Now you are. I know you are not believing. Ahaz is not believing. Ahaz, as a in the God knows the uh, hearts of man. God knows what is going into Ahaz's heart. Ahaz wants to have an alliance with Assyria itself, and God knows that is very, very dangerous. God doesn't want Ahaz to have an alliance with Assyria because they are going to be dominating power, and they will be dominating. So God, God is telling us, "Man, go with that person." Eleven, single person. Ask a sign for yourself from the Lord your God. Ask it either in the depth. or on the height above so what god god said you ask for a sign you ask ask for a sign from where from the height above or from the depth height in the depth or in the height above and one more is beneath okay next one yeah so like when to you you have to see so it's from the height of the heavens to the earth and it's beneath the earth also. There's a three things: height in the heavens, ask a sign anywhere in the heavens. Anywhere. God is telling you, ask for a sign in heavens. I give you a sign. On earth, I can give you a sign. Sign can be miracle happening. Sign can be anything. And under the earth, I can give you the sign where you want. I have the power everywhere. It is me dominating in the heavens. It is my throne, and earth is my. Footstool. Everything is under my control. You ask for a sign from anywhere, and I will give it. Amen. I said in the prayer, uh, we just went through phase where uh, Jesus was taken to the pinnacle, and in Jesus' words, thrown. They were told to jump from the pinnacle. The angels, as Psalm is saying, the angels will come and hold. When Jesus says, "Do not test the Lord," this Deuteronomy six sixteen. There is a law that you should not. Test God. When Satan or in the flesh you feel for believing, you feel like you should test the Lord. God says, "Do not do that." Getting the point? In our flesh, just since I want to know this, or since you know, in the flesh you want to make a decision, and you want to, you know, if Satan is you know doubting you, and you want a sign, who was who was who was prompting Jesus? Satan himself. And Jesus says, "I should not put my God in test." when god gives us gives you a sign you can take a sign who who is a law giver god is a law giver you should understand the law in the full not a small part you know as we were discussing again even satan quoted from the bible from the scripture he quoted psalms satan also knows the the, the scriptures but in the totality the revelation is given to us because because the apostles say even the angels are looking at this salvation But they don't know who is the Satan. Even they are fallen angels. Even they don't know what is happening. They crucified Christ, but they don't know. In every problem where Satan sees, it is defeated. In that defeat, God will take a victory. Amen. God has a victory where Satan thinks he has won. Amen. Where the whole mankind thinks it is defeated on the cross, Christ is defeated in the resurrection. The Christ is exalted. Amen. 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 And so, so God, God, the Christ is his apostles. For a time being, you are sad. Just for a time. This time, everyone is happy. The whole world is happy. But those who were with Christ, the close, the chosen ones, the close ones, they were going through a tough time. But what Jesus says to them, this is only for a time being. Your sorrows will turn into joy. 
joy and their joy will turn into morning and sorrows okay now now what ours is certainly ours becomes very pious this happens with a lot of us when god is telling to do something now he wants now he will follow the scripture now he said i will not as the lord but god himself through a prophet is telling you ask for a sign and i'll give you a sign suddenly goes the scripture see so scripture we have to know in the whole not see uh, people say now everything i have explained through scripture in peter in paul says now have a little wine to the mouth it is good for health so people use that yeah, you can drink wine that's every for any scripture you take one point and you can prove many things but scripture is not to be taken from one portion scripture should be known as a whole and then we have the spirit of god god will always make us understand the scripture as a whole so here ahaz is saying i will not do that next now why is saying i i will not do that there is one more thing in that he has already made a plan in his heart he wants to go with i said now think see god is asking me for a sign if i ask god will do it and if god will do it i cannot go with my sometimes a lot of things happen to us also. we already have made a plan we already know what we are doing but we still want god let your will be done god is come to god god he said your will but we already made a plans can we make can we surrender to god to have his will completely in us rather than in, rather than making a plan even if god says yes or no we are already with the with the plan with our plan so we can we can we can make a step in faith and we can surrender that to god's hands and to ask god that let his will be done and whenever we make decisions as as born again christians we always see the signs always we always see that there are some signs i am making the step uh, maybe god has not shown me this so certain things god shows and you make a step that is we go very confidently but certain times you don't know in faith you make a step and you are thinking well god so you ask for sign god show me a sign so show me sign going making the step give me some signs that i know it is your will to have god's will we should ask for signs it is not wrong asking for signs but you believe in the word in the scripture okay don't say only if i see you i believe that's a very wrong way of putting uh, that it is totally out of context if you do this i will do that god says you do that i will do this amen you believe like in the old testament law you follow the law then you are holy in the new testament we say you are holy so follow it you are in me you are in me you are in me you are my children since i love you i have given my life to you now you obey me if you love me if you don't love me you will not obey me okay let's go then he said hear now o house of david is it a small thing for you to weary men but you will weary my god also so the men men are speaking the prophets are speaking the people of god sends time and again people to speak to his children but they don't listen and you know they make the prophets impatient we we tell scriptures we tell about christ to many 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 people and we wait he when it is going to test them when they are going to repent and we just tell the gospel and sometimes we become very weary we become very tired we become impatient for maybe 5 years they are they are telling uh, they are listening but they are not believing they are not coming in they know but they are not getting out they are in their comfort zone so i say sir it's okay you are making men weary do not make my god weary when he's asking yeah he's selling is a king in the heavens in the above the highs when he's asking and selling something do it when he's telling i am giving you a sign ask for that sign do not make god impatient for god you know what that like david says what is man that he care for him god can destroy the earth in like like the floods came uh, in the time of noah the whole oh whole everyone were gone except for god's mercy that he took one family out and in the history we will see that uh, in biblical history that god always took one he took abraham he took david but it is victory for us see in the garden of eden uh, uh, in the garden of eden he was defeated mankind was defeated through him adam was defeated mankind was defeated who was tempted the woman was tempted you know what god says you tempted the woman you made her to fall from her seed getting it yes where was a failure to mankind god is saying from the same woman woman as a general 
that will be a seed who will bruise your political post. There is a seed. And he shall know. bruise your head and you shall bruise his he, So the victory is there. So that woman failed in the garden of Eden, God is promising the Messiah to come from the seed of the woman. Even when you, you don't understand this prophecy initially, but as time goes, it's so many years afterwards when we come, the next narration from Isaiah about the, about the seed. And he says, the virgin. Even a man is not involved. God is going to touch a virgin and from the virgin this seed is going to come. Yeah. Now we understand the woman, the, the virgin. Okay, man, go to that. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So she will bear a son and his name will be Emmanuel. That is God with us. Uh, Emmanuel is uh, Isaiah 7 to 12. Three places is coming. One is this. Second is uh, 8 8. Just take, uh, we can just skip that one. 8 8 and 8 10. One place it is only translated God with us. So it, is, it has to be Emmanuel. And you know the son. Last time also we, we, we spoke about the son. In Psalms it is said God has a son. In Psalms 2 it is said God has a son. In, in Proverbs 30 it is asked, what is the name of this? Son. The initial name is given as Emmanuel, that he will be born man and God will abide with us. And that is his name. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So what is God is trying to say? What is Isaiah is saying to us that God is going to abide with us. So you, you don't have to worry. Now why this, why this is given as another thing? The seed has to come from the line of David. Now Satan is always trying to remove the house of David. Because when he removes the house of David, the Messiah will not come. The line is broken. You're getting it? So even though the kings are being used to dethrone Ahar, it is the plan of the Satan that the Davidic line is not followed. God says, till the Messiah comes, nothing is going to happen. Now we got the prophecy. Till Messiah. Messiah so, so when the Messiah should come, they believe in a lot of Messiahs. The Messiah, there was an attack on Judah on 586 BC. But they still knew their genealogies because when they, when they, go to, when they went to captivity, they knew everyone's genealogy. In AD 70, when the temple was destroyed by the Romans, the temple was burned and all genealogies were lost. After that, if the Messiah is born, we cannot trace whether it's from the line of David. You're getting the point? So before 70 AD, the Messiah has to come. And until the Messiah comes, the line of David will not be destroyed. But when we see history, we see that there is no line only. But there are a lot of prophets. God takes care of that line. God takes from the shoot. From the, when the plant is nothing, I will rise in root. So when the house of David is fully gone, from there the Messiah will come. And as we trace uh, the genealogy in Matthew and Luke, it goes right till Adam. So till that time God is telling, till the virgin gives birth to your son, since the Messiah comes, nothing is going to happen to the house of a David. Amen. Next. Curds and honey he shall eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and to be good. This prophecy is going to happen 700 years afterwards. Now what has Ahas to do with the prophecy that is going to happen 700 years afterwards? You're getting the point. That's a prophecy. But the prophecy is going to happen 700. That's a sign. But presently, what has Ahas to do with this prophecy? How can you take it for this situation? And they are talking about another boy. Just read Curse and Ani shall eat. And that go with the go with the 56 in verse, you can go together. Curds and honey he shall eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse now, the evil. Now again, the child is. Who is the child? You know, God told Isaiah to go with someone. God told Isaiah to go with his son. And what is the son's name? Sher Jashu. The meaning of Sher Jashu is, a remnant will return. And the name speaks for everything. Now the child is a child whom Isaiah has right now. 
You're getting the point. The previous child was, is born of a virgin, the Messiah comes. This child, see this is a double uh, reference. Uh, there are many scriptures where even Zachary have, first verse is speaking about a, uh, sometimes the first verse speaks about the first coming, second verse speaks of the second coming, but it is put together, it is difficult to understand. Here is spoken about the child that is, with, before this child can choose good and evil, these things will be destroyed. And that happened three years afterwards. Both the king of uh, Syria and uh, Pekka were totally destroyed. 734 I said, seventh, after two years, Syria was, uh, 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 Assyria taken care of Syria and after 10 years in 722, even Assyria got hold of Israel. So you got the scripture. You understand the scripture. So there were two prophecies. One was the prophecy of the virgin birth. All of us gone silent at things. All of us gone silent. One is about the, you have to just understand this. One is about the virgin birth. That is a sign. But at present, God is, God is giving a future sign. And one more thing, when you look about the sign, that sign is not given to Ahaz. That sign is given to the house of David. If you look into the scripture, let's just go back. Here now, O house of David. So it is not to Ahaz God is giving this prophecy. That the Messiah will be born. And the Messiah will come through the line of David. I, just for your understanding, if you look into Matthew's uh, genealogy, uh, actually Matthew's genealogy jumps into the virgin birth. Because Matthew's genealogy, if Joseph would have been the father of, Joseph would have never been, uh, Joseph would never carry the line of David. Because if that one king is Jehoshim, one king is there, the king was cursed. And it is in Jeremiah 22. So God says, none of your children will come into the line of David. One, the evil is attacked. Here God himself is proclaiming a curse on the line, Jaconia. But at the same time, what Luke does is, he traces the line through, Matthew's genealogy is through Solomon. Luke traces the line through Mary and goes to Nathan, another son of David, when Jehochin is not there. You understand? So how God takes care of the line. So if God has promised anything in our life, that is the thing. In this whole context, the, the moral comes in. If God has promised, and what the promises come, promise comes through the scripture. Promise comes through through the uh, through the man of God who speaks to us, who prophesies us. We have a promise in the future, and right now maybe we will not see anything happening. Amen. Right now we will see every, everything dull and void. But if God has said something, Amen. He will make it happen. Amen. No matter, no matter how many forces will come against you. How many will say, I will destroy you. I will remove you from this land. Whatever they will say, but God is saying, I have yeah. brought him in this land. Yeah. It is I who will make him prosperous. The only thing is, we have to abide in Christ. If you remain in me and I in you, everything what shall be given unto you. Yeah. You know, seek his righteousness and his kingdom and everything shall be added unto you. The virgin birth, it's a miracle to us. Hallelujah, 700 years before, hallelujah, I say it's prophesied and it happened, it happened and Matthew says, says the same, same scripture, the virgin shall give birth to a son, even a man was not involved. God can do the unimaginable, the impossible. Have you ever heard a virgin giving birth to a child? It has never happened. It has never happened in history and God Proclaimed it much before. And when God has proclaimed, you will make it happen. No matter how many kings come and go. There is only one king who is an eternal king. And that is what God has told to David. He is given a, is given a covenant to David. That you will have an eternal dynasty. You will have an eternal king. You will have an eternal person. Who can be eternal but God himself? Man cannot be eternal. Solomon could not be eternal. He had to ease his laid in the grave. Peter says, David who has spoken about Christ is in the grave. This grave is, you can see the grave. But there is one of who grave is open. It's from the line of David. He's an eternal king. As you go in the, the, the last part, 9, 6, 7, it says, if you go, the son shall be born. It's 9, 6, 7. For unto us a child is given. It is given. It is going to happen, but I say, selling it is given. For us, a son is for whom? For us. When Ahaz was, I said, I was speaking to Ahaz. It is Ahaz and his people, not God's people. You understand? Amen. To you and your people.
people. So we have to be God's people. You understand that? But it has to be told ours and my children. But it's an ours, so these people were only following ours. But what God wants us to do is follow Him. For unto us a child is born, he's born, and he's the Messiah. And unto us a son is given. Son. There's only one son. Father has only one son, which Sam is saying, there's a son of God. The proverb says, what is the name of the son? And today we have the son being born, we are living after 2000 years, and we know the name of the son. And we know what the son has done to us. The prophet says he will remove all our iniquities. All our sins will be born by him. Isaiah 53 says it's a suffering servant. By his wounds we are he will come into his tree as a person. As 100% man and 100% God. He will come and he will remove our burdens. And the government. Now just, we'll just find out with this. And the government will be upon his shoulders. Who are ruling now? We find many kings and princes. But who is a, on whose shoulders the government? The government is on his shoulder. And his name will call Wonderful Counselor. The Wonderful Comma is not there actually. It is one word. Wonderful Certain scriptures say wonderful counselor. Wonderful in English you use generally, but in Hebrew, wonderful is only used for God. And that word is Pele. Pele. So that only, you only can be used for God. So it's a wonderful counselor. Counselor, I just want to one, add one thing. It's always good to get counsels from elderly people and kings. You know, because they know what is going to happen. They have a plan. Always if you sit with kings, now you have their plans and you know. Your knowledge always increases. It is always good to have counsel with elderly people who have lived their life. And, and, and people, you know, who are kings, we can know their, their thoughts and ideas. And here he's saying, who is a wonderful counselor? Not man, but the heavenly father. If you can be so much appreciative of the counsel that you get to man, how much more you should be appreciative for his counsel. Jesus says one thing, I am not telling anything of my own. Whatever the father tells me, Jesus is also God. He's the second person of the triunity. He is telling, I am not telling anything of my whatever is from the Father, I am revealing it to you. And what the Holy Spirit says, whatever we shall know about him, he shall reveal it to you. We should pray that whatever happens in our life, it should be the, by the wonderful counsel of our God. We should ask for the counsel of God. God will speak. He's a living God. I am not telling about a story. It is fact. God is a living God and when he's a living, he's living, I'm living, we can speak. Amen. And when God is living, through his spirit we can know him, we can understand him, we can be in his presence. When he's alive, when he says he's alive, he's alive. Amen. When you are alive, I am in fear. If I am dead, you cannot speak to me. I am alive, you are alive. We can speak. We can know. Why we are not knowing? Because we are not coming much closer to God. The more we come closer to God, God says, my spirit my father and I myself will abide in you. I in you and you in me. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. Whatever the world, they may kill you also. They may destroy you. But I'm going to the father to prepare a place for you. So that wonderful mighty God, everlasting father is the eternal father, is the father of etern eternality. Only through Jesus is the way, only through Jesus can you can you reach the heavens and he is also the Prince of Peace. Peace. So this is this is what the Son is. Who the Son is? Son is Emmanuel, God with us. And what is his character? He has the garment on his shoulders. His name will be called Wonderful. The title is only with God. A wonderful counsel. It's a wonderful counsel. He will give you counsel. He will not hurt you. He will not destroy you. It is always to build us up. So with this prayer, and thank you. Praise the Lord. Good evening and greetings to all in the sweet and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. That was a sudden break. I did not expect it to end so soon. Anyways, thank you brother Sunu for the word of God. Um, we, the Church of the Redeemed Remnant, gather here every Fridays at 5.30, as you all know. 
Um, next Friday also we'll be gathering here at 5.30. Um, we do not have any Bible study for the coming two weeks. Okay. Um, one, because we would have our 31st meeting at um, 10 from 10.30 to 12.30 at St. James Chapel uh, in St. Martin Anglican Church, Sharjah. Okay? The New Year meeting would be, uh, I repeat once again, the New Year meeting would be at St. Martin's Church. In the St. Martin Church, it will be in at St. James Chapel. All right, um, we have our regular cell meetings. We won't have it in Karama for the coming. Acha, okay, all right. Our cell meetings, we have three cell meetings, one at Dubai Land, the other at Karama. No, we have four cell meetings, yeah. One um, at Dubai Land, Karama, Sharjah. Uh, we will be starting our new cell meeting from tomorrow in Sharjah at Brother Sunu's house, right? Thank you. We won't have it not tomorrow. Oh, there's a change to it which I'm not aware of. <laughs> All right. Um, we will pray for our... Okay, any first timers here? I don't think so. No, okay. We pray for our tithes and offerings and I would request Brother Robin to pray for the tithes and offerings. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful evening that was given us dear Lord. Dear Lord, you have prophesied to us that you are Emmanuel, God with us, dear Father. Dear Lord, it's by your grace and mercy we've been redeemed, dear Father. And we pray for the tithes and offerings that was prepared for us to give you for your kingdom, dear Father. Blessed in the mighty name of Jesus, dear Father. Seal it under your precious blood. Let the finances overflow for your kingdom's sake, dear Father. Dear Lord, for those people who put in put it today, enable them in the coming weeks to do so, dear Father. Let them reap the harvest that they work entirely for your kingdom, dear Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries? Yes. 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 Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries? Yes. Chichi, would you please stand? And I would request uh, Ranima, who else? Pray for Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. Can we just close our eyes and just stretch our hand towards Sister Sajani. Father God, as we as we all gather here, we just stretch our hand towards Sajani, Sister. We pray that, Father, your favor come upon her. And we know that, Father, she's taken a, a great step, Father, and doing everything on her own and your, your her strength, Father. And in this coming year, we pray that, Father, more than the strength, you will do a, a complete, Father, transformation in her life. And through her life, Father God, the, the victory, victory will be won in every area where they are struggling at this moment in time. As a family, we stretch forward our hand towards you, uh, her and uh, Brother Joseph. And we pray that they will, the salvation will come upon them and healing will come upon them and a total transformation will take place in their life, Father. Because you are, you have said, you have taken everything in on the cross and by your stripes we are healed. Father, we proclaim that there will be victory over their lives, Father. Thank you and praise you for everything that you have done for Sajay Sister the, the last year. And taking her in a step by step, Father, to the day, the door that you have prepared already for her, Father. And I pray that you will keep her uh, under, under your control and let the peace that surpasses all human understanding guard her heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And this is our prayer. And this is our song that we want to see the victory path coming through in 2019. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. We have Sister Sharon in our midst. Welcome back. And Jonathan, it was nice having you also with us. Uh, let's all stand up for the closing prayer. Father, we thank you, Master, for this beautiful time thou gave us, Lord. Thank you, Father, for accepting our offerings, for accepting our praises and worship. Thank you, Father, Lord, for speaking to us through your word. Thank you, Father, God, for whatever thou hast promised to us. We are going to see it pass, Father God. Thank you, Master.
Master, even though the promises may be delayed, Father, we know that it would never ever be denied by you, God. We would see it, Father God. Master, as we come to, towards the end of this year, we thank you, Father. We sincerely thank you, Master, for every situation and circumstances that we went through, Lord Father. We believe because those situations made us strong and got us closer to thee, O oh God Father. We thank you, Master, for all the blessings that you gave us, O oh God Father. We thank you for every small and great blessing, O oh God. From the bottom of our hearts, we thank you, Master. We thank you, God, for the comfort and the peace of the Holy Spirit that we always enjoyed, O oh God Master. We thank you, God, for being such a good father to us, O oh God Master, and such an awesome God to us, O oh God Master. We thank you, God Father, for guiding us every step, O oh God Father, that we should be walking and going through, O oh God Master. Father God, we give once again ourselves into thy hands, O oh God Father. Fill us with your knowledge and wisdom, O oh God Master. Help us and equip us, O God, Father, to bring people to thy kingdom, O God, Father, to be witnesses in, your, in our workplaces, O God, Father, and build your kingdom, O God, Father. Speak to us in the days to come, O God, Master. Hallelujah. Father God, once again, we give all things into thy hands. We keep all those people who are traveling this week, O God, Master. We keep Pastor Blessing into thy hands. We keep Surah by your and Jonathan into thy hands. We pray for your traveling mercies to be with them, O oh God, Master. And to be with each of us, O oh God, Master. Give us the grace to live a life that is worthy of Amen. your calling, O oh God, Master. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayer. And we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us to the coming of Christ, to take us all to his eternal kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.